I'm here with uh, filmmaker Ira Sachs and actor Zachary Booth. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your new film, Keep the Lights On, Ira? Yes. Um, Keep the Lights On is the story of a um, relationship between two men in New York City over the recent past uh, mm -hmm. that takes place over about 10 years of time. And it's a, a kind of epic story of two people who get together and for many reasons, including sex and drugs and all the things that sometimes get in the way of, 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 of an easy life together, mm -hmm. they, they stay together. They, they hold on to each other. And it's a film that really questions and asks why two men who have so much um, love for each other, but also so much um, pain with, with each other, what, what keeps them together and why, mm -hmm. why they hold on. And some people are saying it's slightly autobiographical. Did you have an experience with a sort of person like that? Uh, I, the film was began in a very autobiographical place. Mm -hmm. I was in a relationship that ended in 2007, mm -hmm. and um, really on the last day of the relationship, I had a sense that there was um, there was a first day, and there mm -hmm. was a last day, and there was a story in between. Right. And um, I also felt like the story of that relationship, like this, was was n not one that we often see in, in mm -hmm. the film. The, the stories of what gay, gay men's life. Right. Like in a city like New York, in our culture, which is, by the way, like looks a lot different than, than, than most people think in terms of gay, straight, you know, different cultures, different races, are different mixture of things. There is this certain new way that we're all living mm -hmm. um, that I hope to try to get across also. And do you think the use of drugs and sort of like a tenacious relationship, is that typical of gay relationships or is it just some relationships, you know? Um, well, I think it, I, I'm not being a... A social scientist yeah. to say, that. <laughs> right? But, but also to say that I mean that the drugs have, uh, have been a central part of mm -hmm. the culture for sure. And and this film tried to look at sex and drugs mm -hmm. and and all behavior. You know how you are with your friends and how you are with your family and how you mm -hmm. are on your birthday without judgment, mm -hmm. um, for and sure, shamelessly. And tried to look at behavior directly. Um, so that in a way allows people to enter into the discussions about how we live and what's mm -hmm. working and what's not working and not to be afraid. Cool. And what was it like? Um, you sort of play the drug addict character. Um, sort of. You know, there's other... There's a lot of <laughs> there's, the yeah. You play Paul, who is um, the boyfriend mm -hmm. of the sort of more stable one in the relationship. What was that like sort to of. have to... Sort yeah. Of. <laughs> Uh, what was it like to play that character? Well, it was um, it was challenging at, at times to to really go to the places that we had to go to physically and emotionally with the drug use and mm -hmm. and um, to sort of put myself in in the shoes of somebody that was going through what what Paul goes through. Um, it was a challenge, but it was a, a fun challenge because I was surrounded by you know mm -hmm. collaborators and supportive people that uh, helped me when I couldn't quite get there on mm -hmm. my own. And I don't know if you're gay or not, but have you played a gay character before? Yeah, I did a TV show in, um, it was for like the N Channel years ago where I played mm -hmm. a gay teenager. But since then, uh, I don't, oh no, I have. I did a play, a Craig Lucas play in New York a few years ago called Fair okay. Play Enemy. And, and have you ever done, gay role. have you ever done one that's so sort of explicit? You know, there's some pretty no. raunchy sex scenes. <laughs> no, I mean, I've done, I've done the naked thing before. Yeah. I was running around naked as a hippie, but <laughs> a different circumstance. That's the first time that I ever, you know, had that sort of physical mm -hmm. intimacy um, on camera, and and, uh, and also the first time I had ever had to use, you know, use drugs like that on camera. Did you? Act, were they real drugs or? No. Because that was the crystal meth. The crack was uh, a nut. It was like a hazelnut. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the drugs aren't, you know, the film is less about the exact drugs and what the effects are, and more about the relationship, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a relationship story, and it's, it's a, but it's about the details of the relationship. So mm -hmm. we try to get them right. So mm -hmm. yeah. that includes, like, the, the changing nature of how gay men have hooked up in New York. So we yep. have phone sex lines, or we have computer hooked up, we mm -hmm. have different things. It's also um, um, how gay men's lives are integrated into bro broader lives. And these mm -hmm. characters, they're artists, they have, um, they have a close community of friends and families, and that's sort of what my life looks like, I think it's also what mm -hmm. Zach like, look, looks like, the gay people, and I think this is the big difference in a way. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me what is the difference between queer cinema now and queer cinema mm -hmm. years ago, and I think um, I didn't need to set out to make a queer film, because I just needed to, to, to tell my own story in mm -hmm. a way. 20 years ago, we were trying to define our identity in right. a certain way, and 
and I feel like I'm more comfortable in my identity, so I just need to be direct about mm -hmm. what I see. And um, there are in the sex scenes, spoiler alert. There's some, there's some scrotum, some butt. Uh, so, do you think sure. that um, there's sort of a little debate going on right now about whether Hollywood needs more gay sex um, in order for us to be accepted in the mainstream or whatnot? How do you guys feel about that stuff? Uh, I don't, I don't know, you know, like necessarily what Hollywood does or doesn't need. I know that this film, to me, in in watching it. It's not about shock. It's not about, um, you know, showing things that we shouldn't be looking at. It, mm -hmm. It's not about overexposing sex. Right. Um, it, it's a character in the film, the sex and the drugs. I mean, there's something that happens in a relationship between two people. When you start meet by meeting someone saying, hello, having sex, and then within a couple of weeks you're, like, mm -hmm. smoking crack and having mm -hmm. sex, you've crossed lines I think that I would imagine in a relationship absent of those things it might take months to create that intimacy mm -hmm. so I think that's a sort of interesting way in an interesting exploration of it and that's something I think of course we would all love to mm -hmm. see more of yeah. which is the different ways that relationships happen and the, and the different ways that people find intimacy and how a lot of those methods are secrets to us because mm -hmm. we have a lot of shame surrounding them True. And that shame, if we could get rid of all of that, would probably be a great thing for mm -hmm. everybody, Hollywood included. Yep. I mean, I would also just say to, to, to your viewing audience that if you go to this film looking thinking it's going to be a sex romp, you're going to be disappointed because the sex, is really, you know, the sex is really um, in the context of how people relate to each other. So, um, and, and it's really, really an emotional story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's really what we set out to do. Mm -hmm. There is one scene where, um, I think that was particularly striking, where your character, Zachary, is having um, sex with a prostitute. Mm -hmm. in I think it's in Europe somewhere. Or was we're it in, New York? It's, it's, in, it's in Tribeca. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, Which I know the area well. <laughs> in a way, in a way. <laughs> it's almost like, tour, like you go as a tourist to see all the rich people, I think. Um, anyway, so... Um, during that scene, the boyfriend character um, is holding your hand while you're getting, you know, kind of topped by a, a prostitute. What was that scene like to film? It was, uh, I think, a really easy moment to act. Yeah. Because the circumstances were so real. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. We're lying there, no one has any clothes on, and mm -hmm. he comes in from the other room. And, um, you know, Tor has a really strong presence. And so when he enters the room, you feel the shift. Mm -hmm. You feel the change. So for me, it was really just about living in it and breathing in it. And uh, by the time that day was over, I was emotionally mm -hmm. exhausted, uh, for sure. I don't know what it must have been like for you to, to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I think the whole film, what I try to do, I don't actually rehearse with my actors before okay. I start shooting uh, we talk a lot mm -hmm. and we talk individually about the scenes but I don't um, I don't let them work with each other or say um, anything to each other before the cameras are rolling mm -hmm. and because I'm what I'm trying to capture is something that happens only in a moment mm -hmm. and I think what happened in that scene as in many other scenes in the film is that something was happening in that moment that we captured on film mm -hmm. there was an emotional relationship between the three characters in mm -hmm. that scene that was immediate, and it doesn't have to be recreated. We just mm -hmm. have to get it once. Um, and sort of avid attention payers might have noticed that a very similar scene to this showed up in Bill Clegg's memoir. Um, so is it based on, you know, a true story? Did that scene happen in real life? Oh, um, the... The scene, I mean, a lot of the scenes in the film are based on mm -hmm. things that were really personal uh, mm -hmm. to me. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Once you start creating a film, you, you, you know, the lead character is Danish. Yeah, like, <laughs> I uh, noticed. Yeah, <laughs> and you are so, gay and Jewish. I'm yeah. gay and Jewish and from Memphis. From Memphis. Tennessee. <laughs> from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, it, it becomes something in the process of making the film that, that is there's something different. I mean, I think this is a film about these two characters, Eric and Paul. Mm -hmm. I, all, you know, I my last um, I made a feature film called um, uh, 40 Shades of Blue, which is about mm -hmm. a Russian woman living in Memphis. And uh, I identify with her. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> Madame Beverly You know, it's like, so I, I feel like um, the details are real, mm -hmm. um, but they're not necessarily mine. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thanks so much for talking, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.